Anniversary Towers inside the office of the IEBC CEO Ezra Chiloba, the man some would describe of the moment. And uh, you have the National Super Alliance demonstrators outside. Just a few moments ago being dispersed, uh, police officers that have been manning these premises, tear gassing those protesters that were getting rowdier by the moment. And we've also seen other protests around. But let's listen to the man himself, his thoughts on all that is going on around the country at this very critical point. Thank you for making time for KTN News, sir. What do you make of the protest? We saw protesters out here with banners saying Shiloba must go. Well, uh, first of all, you should be stating that uh, you are seeking refuge from the, <laughs> from the tear gas. <laughs> That's how we came here. Uh, well, as you can see, first of all, is that uh, uh, we're in the office, we are working, uh, doing what we're supposed to be doing. And, um, yeah, I mean, uh, protests, uh, people have the constitutional right uh, to protest, to be able to uh, state what the issues are. But at the end of the day, I think uh, what will help the country move forward is how you um, uh, put together those issues, package them in a way that is uh, a solution that will help the country uh, to be able to, to progress. Knowing that we, you have uh, 29 days to the election, and uh, the commission has still got the mandate to be able to do that. Uh, we've got uh, no much time left. So what we just have to do now is to try as much as possible to bring all stakeholders on board and to ensure that uh, we're getting ready for this election. And saying that, you know, the chair has already invited the presidential candidates uh, for a meeting tomorrow. We hope they'll show up uh, so that we have some constructive dialogue to address the issues that um, have been raised by the different stakeholders. Uh, the intention being that uh, as a country we must be able to pull together to make progress. Right. Yeah. Is it your statement today that you as CEO IBC do not intend to resign? Well, uh, I've not thought about that. Uh, what I know is that uh, I got uh, 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 responsibility uh, before me and I have to discharge that uh, responsibility. Um, of course, uh, the, those who raise concerns, and we can say that uh, people have a right to express uh, themselves, but uh, whatever we, we do, we must be able to do it within the confines uh, of the law. And given the nature of, uh, of this office, uh, we've been here before, and uh, we need to learn uh, from the past, even as we uh, look into the future. Yeah. yeah. The Supreme Court ruling annulling the presidential election, a serious historical moment for this country. Do you take no responsibility in that annulment? Um, look, uh, the Supreme Court was also very clear in terms of the observations that they, they made in as far as the election is, is concerned. And uh, it's a phrase that they used, that if there was a, any um, issue around failure, is a systemic problem, is a system problem within the institution that we need to focus on and actually use phrases like uh, reflection. And if you understand uh, the history of this commission, and I watched KTN this morning, they were looking at the history of the institution, the ECK days, the IIEC days, then of course the IEBC, which can be divided into the Isaac Hassan's IEBC and Wafula Chabukati's IEBC. We've always been in transition. And if there have been any challenges uh, uh, to be addressed in the electoral process, uh, you can actually see that the way in which we've attempted to address those challenges uh, is not um, a magic bullet. It's not something that you have to fix um, with, with one action. You have to look at it from a system perspective. Mm -hmm. And if you look at where, 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 where we've come from um, in the last two, three years, uh, trying to address some of the systemic challenges um, uh, in the electoral process, I can say without fear of contradiction that we've made, made significant uh, progress um, uh, compared from where we've come from. And the issue is, are we going to build on the successes that we've achieved so far, or are we going to undo uh, most of these uh, uh, good uh, actions for the sake of the short-term gains? Yeah. So as a, as a country, we must 
learn on how to build uh, institution for the long institutions for the long term. For the long term, you yeah. talk about systems and that those must be allowed to work, but that doesn't work in a vacuum. Again, we go back to the issue of personnel, of staff, of people running these systems, because the push now is people feel in NASA and others that the back should stop with you. That other, as the CEO of the Secretariat, some people cannot continue to be in office, uh, head of ICT, as we've also had been cited, and other officials, because these systems are run by people, aren't they? That's true, and we've got 800 people uh, who are on a permanent basis. And the reason for that is that each and every person plays a critical role in the electoral process, so that unless you pinpoint and say, at this particular point, a certain officer had the following duty, he or she did not be, or she did not discharge that particular duty, it would be very difficult to say you're addressing a systemic issue by pinpointing uh, individuals. I think um, there's a political side to this, but again, I'll repeat this, you must look at solutions that are going to consolidate gains mm -hmm. for the long term. Today, it is me or my colleagues. Uh, tomorrow, it will be someone else because of the short-term gains that we're trying to pursue. Mm. So from my own experience, I think that uh, the country has to calm down uh, from anxiety and tension and see what is it that we can do to ensure that the next election meets the standards that the Supreme Court, uh, Supreme Court said it has to meet. Okay, so in as far as we had the 8th of August election, we now have the 26th of October election. What is the difference between that IEBC on the 8th of August and the one we will see going into the 26th in all aspects, whether it's personnel, whether it's your infrastructure, whether it's your partnering in systems and other issues? Uh, what we've done so far is to look at the observations made by the Supreme Court. Uh, it's very clear clear that we must rethink our infrastructure, especially when it comes to resource uh, management, uh, both in terms of the procedure and the systems that we've put in place. So what we're going to see is that the procedure will vary uh, uh, a little bit. In the last uh, election, uh, uh, based on the Court of Appeal decision, we had taken the position that uh, there was no need for RAS to deal with Form 34S at the National Tallying Center because they will have been processed by the constituency returning officers. Remember that the Court of Appeal had said the results at that particular point are final. So what the National Returning Officer was to do was to receive the 290 um, uh, forms for the, from the respect, respective constituencies. But this time around, uh, what the Supreme Court is saying is that now we have to bring all those uh, forms together, mm -hmm. verify one against the other, and that will have an implication in terms of how we spread out our uh, officers and how we set out, uh, how, how, how we deploy our technology so that we have some sense of seamlessness from the polling station constituents at the National Tallying Center. I think, that, I think that's the main, main issue. Uh, the other bit is a complementary mechanism when it comes to results transmission. What will be the alternative? to um, failure in terms of transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, we think that uh, we must come up with a clear procedure that is well communicated to all stakeholders so that we are all on the same page. If you ask us, I think we did quite a lot of work uh, in the last election, but um, it appears that not many of our stakeholders uh, came along with us. So that's one of the greatest lessons that we learned. And that's why when chairman says, you know, let's sit down and dialogue, uh, he basically wants to bridge the gap between of information between what we know uh, as a process of the election and what our stakeholders ought to know as a process of the election. And let's talk more about the stakeholders because the National Super Alliance, for instance, we saw Raila Odinga lead the other principals for a meeting a few weeks ago and the Jubilee side was not here. The deputy president showed up later. There have been attempts to get the sides to talk. That has not happened. NASA has made the irreducible minimums known to the commission. They say the same have not been addressed by the commission. So they wonder what is the point of talking if so far the commission has not shown any good faith? No, I mean, I think the commission has gone out of its way. You saw the chair wrote yesterday and he invited all the stakeholders. I think the question is whether the stakeholders really want to have this matters resolved. Yeah, that's a simple question. Mm -hmm. Do the stakeholders want this matters resolved? Mm 
We're okay. open. We've invited them. Uh, we've gone out of the way, and uh, we are still open to have that particular conversation. But you've not been able to have a meeting with all of them at the table at the same time. What is the problem there? And that's why I'm, uh, I'm pushing back to them and saying, you know, why can't you come? Ask for our invitation. The chair has invited them. He set out the agenda for the meeting, and we hope that by tomorrow all of them will come together. Yeah. yeah. There's a concern right now, and we've seen uh, NASA flag it as well, because one of the reducible minimums is that Al Gurea does not uh, print the uh, ballot papers for the forthcoming election. And we hear that the UNDP will be procuring the new printers. And they said that was a unilateral decision without consultation, which is what uh, had they'd indicated they wanted to happen. Well, again... Um there's a bit of mixed information out there. The position is that uh, uh, the commission has a contract with Algorea, an existing contract, a two-year contract, to allow us to print ballot papers whenever we require uh, them. Now, what, is, what has happened is that uh, uh, there were some consultations uh, here and there, and the question was um, what value will the UN, uh, for example, uh, add in the event that we ask them to help us uh, in this particular process. And uh, there's a possibility, of course, of, of, of procuring. But also, uh, what is most important is to provide that independent oversight mm -hmm. on the process of uh, printing of uh, the ballot papers. Mm -hmm. But that is still a discussion that is ongoing, knowing very well that we have an existing contractual relationship with, with, with Allegrea. Mm -hmm. So, can, for example, the UN uh, bring on board experts who can watch over uh, the printing for the sake of public confidence uh, building the electoral process? So it will still be Al uh, At this particular point, we haven't changed that particular position. Yeah. But there's a proposal to have UNDP source other. Yeah, especially when it comes to quality assurance. Yeah. yeah. Allow me to ask you two more questions. I know you're in a hurry to Yeah, we have. Uh, but there's a very... The I know, <laughs> and you're working. But a very important yeah. question uh, that has been put forward over and over again around um, the question of ICT. And transmission was a big issue. And uh, a controversial position of the ICT manager, who at one point uh, was either suspended but came back into office under unclear circumstances. Then there was a leaked memo saying, indicating that the chair had, again, uh, fired him or suspended him. Uh, and it's unclear what exactly is going on, and yet a very important position he holds. Can you clarify for us, uh, ICT manager Muhati, is he still in office? Has it been suspended? Has it been fired? What's the position? Uh, James is still in office. Uh, uh, James is still in office. I think what the chair raised were some of the issues that were subject to discussion uh, at the commission level, uh, which is also an internal administrative uh, issue. So at this point, I would not want to talk much about that. Yeah. But he's in office, yeah. He's in office. So there is a push and pull still. The war continues no, between again, uh, uh, the chair, again, the memos he's sending, again, and what again, we see posted um, by the IBC account. I think, I think it's important to yeah. know that every institution has got uh, certain protocols and the internal communication was internal communication. A lot of things go on here that we, we, we don't have to share with the public. So the fact that the memo got out in the public does not necessarily mean uh, that's the actual position. And there's a lot of uh, uh, discussions uh, going on, on many, many many other things. So, yes. Allow me to ask, for Kenyans watching, and yes. you say it's not the actual position, and yet it's a memo from the chair. This is the head of the IEBC. So what would be the actual position if not that from the chair? But it hasn't communicated to Kenyans. Uh, the Kenyans must know that uh, the internal communication at IEBC, mm -hmm. uh, which are done through the memos, the fact that the memo has been leaked, uh, uh, it only tells one side of the story, um, or the intention is to tell one side of the story, but an institution does not succeed by just looking at it from one side of the story. Mm. Uh, that's why we said on any issues that have been raised in the past, the Commission will be able to, um, at the right time, be able to communicate formally uh, to, uh, to, to Kenya. What yeah. do you attribute the leakages to? Because they're not doing good for the Commission. It just paints a picture of a Commission in disarray. Well, uh, I think uh, some individuals... Uh, uh, who, who uh, uh, I think some individuals who do not really uh, uh, pay attention to uh, the, uh, I would say, yeah, due process, I would say that. Um, but it's a matter that we're investigating uh, yeah. to see what actually happened. Whoever did that, of course, does not have uh, the best interest of the organization uh, at heart. 
And uh, it doesn't matter how long it takes, yeah. um, we'll be able to track them down and justice will be done. Yeah. Thank you very much. Final <laughs> question. <laughs> as, we go, as we go see you, because one of the viewers calling in asking if officials who saw affidavits, you were one of the IBC officials that saw affidavits that were submitted in the Supreme Court, right. and those issues were found to be untrue. For example, the security features, we saw Kasai, so several affidavits, and the court found that some of those orders they made were disobeyed. Shouldn't there be action taken against officials who were seen to have misled? the court uh, I don't know what you what you stating um, but we got our own position in terms of uh, 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 the Supreme Court uh, uh, position mm -hmm. which we have been analyzing and we have a position on uh, on that uh, you saw an affidavit because you believe in the evidence that you're presenting before the court um, at no point did we say that uh, uh, what we were swearing uh, uh, was inconsistent in, in, uh, uh, with what we believed uh, in. So uh, I can assure you that uh, we have all our documents together. Uh, we are reviewing to see if there are any discrepancies uh, between what uh, we presented to court and what we, we also have. One of the things I can tell you is that, uh, yeah, if you look at it, I think uh, our position is still correct in terms of the nature of the documents that we presented. And if there were any discrepancies, I think we ably uh, explained that. And we'll be revisiting that matter uh, at the right time. At the right time. Thank you. Plans for 26th of October. Uh, Kim's kids, are they the same? The same, same kids. We are reconfiguring them, uh, getting them ready, uh, looking at some of the procedures that uh, perhaps will enhance efficiency and ensuring that we have as many uh, forms as possible being transmitted this time around. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working on training very hard, uh, trying to see that the officers who are going to uh, to use a Kim's kit uh, really follow procedure. So it's the same arrows, POs? Yeah, but of course, based on performance. Uh, uh, some of them, of course, who had issues, we uh, looked at uh, some of the concerns. Uh, if we think that... Uh, uh, the issue that affected your processes as, is such that um, uh, does not allow you to work for us again. We are also trying to uh, deal with that uh, particular issue. But one thing I can assure you is that uh, we are getting ready for this and um, we, we are going to succeed. Because in the other petitions going on, some courts have urged that the Kim's kit be preserved for those proceedings. So does the Commission now intend to purchase other Kim's kit in the such eventuality? Um, yeah, that's a bit, that's, that has been a challenge. And uh, what we're saying is that there's a bit of information gap between what the courts understand as the election material uh, and what we understand. So last week we had a meeting with the Judiciary Committee on Elections that is uh, chaired by Justice Mbogoli, and uh, we explored this issue. Our position is that I think what is important is the data that is in that, on those particular kits. It's not the hardware. So this will allow us to access the hardware. We prepared for purpose of the presidential election. We'll be able to retain information in the SD cards so that whoever needs or requires that particular information will be able to be availed of that particular information. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so at the administra uh, administrative level, uh, the judiciary is aware. Uh, we are hoping that the judges also will be uh, properly uh, informed so that they make appropriate uh, decisions that do not necessarily hamper uh, our processes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, electronic transmission, how is that? Is there any update, yeah. upgrade? Thank you very much. I think we, 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 we've done uh, uh, all of our best. Yeah. We're getting to improve our system, yeah. to increase coverage, and to ensure that transmission happens 100%. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank yeah. you so much. We have definitely overstayed uh, our welcome, uh, but thank you for making the time, CEO IEBC Ezra Chiloba. He says they are preparing for the 26th October repeat presidential poll. It's business as usual here at the Anniversary Towers with all of their staff. Earlier on when we arrived, there were several demonstrators outside in the streets. Uh, but because they were getting closer and rowdier, the police who are manning these premises dispersed them using tear gas. So as we stand now, and perhaps we could just go closer to the other side and you could see outside the window, the streets completely cleared out, quiet, not your usual traffic, business as usual here, uh, along, what happened, what street is this? University way, yes. So a little bit of resumption of normal traffic there and journalists, uh, my colleagues as well, uh, outside. But I'll take it back to studio 
for continuing coverage. Sophia, don't go.